What's up, Gunners? Happy Pride Month. Today we will be playing the meta build. Everybody runs it, everybody loves it. So I got curious, how many times can I actually escape? Will this make Solo queue less miserable? Probably not. I would say 10 games are enough as a sample to see if this is the crutch I need or if I'm simply incompetent. You will be seeing the game I thought was most entertaining because I'm not going to upload a one hour video. Anyways, enjoy the video, Pookies. Starting with family residence, it is time to make valuable plays like holding M1, eating your favorite snack, and preparing for war. <laughs> Trying to be the free gen prevention, I have come to notice that baby girl Jane seems to be tunneled off hook. Making my way towards her trying to take aggro or a hit, I fail miserably because my brain thought it was silly to dodge a Heidi Ho. Not being a big fan of gambling, naturally it comes hating to go against Chucky at majority of these loops, meaning that I pre-dropped this palette to not get my juicy ass cheeks hit. Running towards the LNT, I try to crouch around the corner to throw silly Goober off. Beneficially, he gives himself a concussion anyways. Apparently faking the window was enough for him to drop the chase and run back to Jane that was thankfully being picked up. Hey, trading dance with her was definitely not on my list but nonetheless works out since Silly Willy decides to chase me again. The zoning with Heidi Ho would have been a perfect plan, this sadly being ruined by a big stinky whiff. After blushing a bit too hard, Goofy Goober decided not to be smelly and pick up Kate. Me being the pesky survivor I am, I try to get his attention by doing the gen in his face and then holding W super hard, giving us a bunch of distance. Arriving at a super comfy palette, it is time for some cardio. Not fond of being forced to use life here, we have no other choice. Talking about no other choice, we skedaddle back to safety, meanwhile being unsure of his remains. Realizing he respects pallets as much as he hopefully respects women, I decide to greet it, giving me enough space to vault the window again. Giving me the head shake of disapproval, we're back at a Heidi Ho attempt. Counting my days and thinking I was going to get my ass cheeks spread, I have been blessed by the almighty latency gods getting away with a medium vault. Tweaking like there was no tomorrow, I thought he was going to alt F4, but he just needed a break and decided to suck it up and leave me like people that told me they wouldn't. Ferociously holding M1 is also prohibited in this household, therefore it's time for a second round with Ambitious Andy. Fearing my life at the shortest side of the loop, Stinky uses all his brain power to give me a good old slap on the ass. Back at my favorite tile, it is time to gritty my way around the palette, making him pop a blood vessel or something. Getting to use life, we turn into the fastest motherfucker alive, escaping his whiff barrage and getting to a palette where we can actually see Short King. Right Knowing he's a respectful citizen of the DVD realm, we get to greet the palette one more time. Right foot out. Right foot creep. Oh, Thinking he doesn't have the capabilities to hit me with his Heidi Ho, I have severely misjudged him. Dreading Stinky McStank would tunnel me, he has officially proven himself to be a humble individual gaining a special place in my heart. <laughs> Getting use of my resilience, I was once again reminded that holding M1 is a taboo. <laughs> Clenching my cheeks after almost being liquidated, I'm thinking to myself, why on God's earth we're still trying to do this generator and not a different one. Seeing that Gooby has actually committed herself to my cake, I use life to get the fuck out of there, resulting in him releasing his inner dog. Continuing to edge him with being hyperpestiferous, I put myself into an unfavorable situation, leading to a drop palette and broken hearts. His conclusion being that it's time for a cleanse of this infestation, I win a free annihilation with a ride down to basement. Fortunately, the girlies have done all the generators in the meantime. Hoping that he had finally purified this match of me, I came back without any repercussions, just like a Minecraft YouTuber who likes miners. Having opened the exits and fully healed, time has come to save Kate from Gooby Wooby's sticky fingers because she for some reason traded with Jane yet again. Trying to jump in as soon as Fang took a hit seemed like a good plan in theory, but nobody could suspect Sticky Fingers to have such mass. Comprehending that I was behind him, he thankfully gives me a love tap too. Using the window to exceed the speed limit was the play. What wasn't was the other exit not being opened, making this miscalculation led to Fang being downed. Pushing our luck with attempting to heal, we were compelled to leave the sting site. Imagining Kate would be right behind us, she conveniently disappeared. Hastily trying to see what is going on and had already happened. Kate has nobly sacrificed herself for Feng, leading for her being the one left behind. 
despite getting no value from adrenaline, I think this build is well rounded for people who want to have a somewhat okay chance at escaping, but at this point I'm pretty sure everyone is already aware of that. Having played 10 games with these perks have left me with 5 escapes and 5 deaths, even though one was a pity escape granted by a killer and one being a DC. Do with that info what you want. At the end it's really not the perks that matter, it's the teammates that make solo queue less or more miserable. Now the question being, should I do this for killer 2? If so, let me know. If not, also let me know. Thank you for watching. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Have a good day.